Hello everyone, welcome back to Explorer Electronics. In this video, let's see the design of 4-bit counter using D flip flop. In the 4-bit counter, usually we will be having a 4 outputs. We call it as Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. So this 4-bit counter will count the values from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. So this bit is Q3, this is Q2, this is Q1, this is Q0. So initially the counter value will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Then it will take a count to 1. Then it will take a count to 2. Similarly, it continues up to 15, 0 to 15. Once it reaches the maximum value, all the outputs reaches 1, 1, 1, 1. Again, it will come back to 0. Then it start counting from 0 again to 15, again to 0, like that. So here Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0 will be generated by the flip-flops inside a counter. So here these flip-flops are D flip-flop. This output of D flip-flop will be Q3. One more D flip-flop will be there. The output of that is Q2. One more D flip-flop, the output is Q1. One more D flip-flop we require that gives Q0. Here the input of the D flip-flops are D3 for this. Let me call it as D2, B, D1. And this input D flip-flop is D0. And these flip-flops share a common clock signal. Since the counter we are designing is a synchronous counter, we need to have the same clock signal for all the flip-flops. Then we call it as a synchronous design. And we will be having one more input to the counter that is reset signal. This reset signal is also provided to all the flip-flops as common. Why this reset is required means Suppose counter is in this position 1010. In the next cycle, suppose if we are going to give reset is equal to 1, what happens? The output of the counter will come back to 0. So to reset the count output to 0, we require this reset signal. This reset signal is going to make all the outputs to 0. Let us see how to design this counter and how we are going to provide this D3, D2, D1, D0 inputs so that it should behave it as a behave as a counter here what we know is that the output of a counter will be 0 first then 1 then 2 it go up to 15 again it will come back to 0 0 0 0 so that is how the state diagram is showing here the state diagram is that it is going to give the states what are what is the state of the counter initially it is 0 0 0 0 let me take then it will go to 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 1, 1, 1, this is 15. Again, it will come back to 0. That is what the state diagram is. So here we are having all the outputs. We need to predict or we need to design these inputs. What should be D3, D2, D1, D0 so that we are going to get the outputs in this way. So let me tell you how to derive D3, D2, D1, D0. For that, we require excitation table of the flip-flop which we are going to use to design this counter. Here I am using a D flip-flop. So D flip-flop excitation table will be this. What excitation table consisting of? This is the present state. Means if the D flip-flop will be having Qn presently as 0. Next clock cycle, this is the clock cycle. In one clock cycle, it will be having 0 output. In next clock cycle, if I am expecting it as 0, what should be the input? Next cycle also it should give 0 means I need to provide D as 0. So that is what the excitation table is. In the present state it is 0. Next state it should give 0 only. So I need to provide the 0 as input. Similarly, if my present state is 0 and the next state is 1, what I need to provide to the D flip flop? 1 only. Why? Because whatever D that will be carried to Qn in D flip flop. So this excitation table is required. Suppose the previous state is 0, 0, 0, 0. What is the next state we are expecting? 0, 0, 0, 0 is the previous state. Next state should be 0, 0, 0, 1. That is how the counter behaves. Similarly, if we have present state as 0, 0, 0, 1, what is the next state we are expecting? 2, that is 0, 0, 1, 0. Now, by looking at the present state and the next state, we can predict what should be our D. Suppose if the present state is 0 and the next state I am expecting is 0, so this D3 should be 0. Why? Because 
here it is 0 the next state should be 0 I need to provide 0 similarly previous state is 0 next state is also 0 here also 0 comes so previous state is 0 next state is 0 here also 0 previous state is 0 next state is 1 so previous state is 0 here next state is 1 what should be our d input 1 so here we are going to get 1 as d naught similarly if you look at the next stage this is the first state next state if the previous state is 0 0 0 1 what should be our next state we need to predict so q3 is 0 q3 plus is the next state is 0 when it is 0 0 0 will be our d input similarly for this 0 0 again 0 0 is 0 so again for 0 and this one what we are going to get 1 as d similarly for previous state is 1 next state is 0 for 1 0 what is d 0 so here if you look at this table these four value values what we have the next state values 0 0 0 1 will be the d inputs right similarly the next state 0 0 1 0 those are the d inputs suppose if the next state uh, if the previous state is 0 0 1 0 what is the next state 0 0 1 1 we are going to expect so this will be the d input 0 0 1 1 suppose if 1 0 1 0 is my previous state and the next state I am expecting is 1 0 1 1 so this is 10 so the next state of output is 11 so this will be our d 1 0 1 1 so we can write all the possible values here from 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 and we can say what is the next state and what is the d input suppose 1 1 1 1 is the present state of or the previous state of counter what is the next state it will come back to 0 in this case what should be the d input 0 0 0 0 only so I have filled all the values here you can see if the previous state is this next state is this and what are the d inputs now we got all d3 d2 d1 and d0 values all 16 combinations we got now what we need to do we need to use kmap method to find out what should be d3 expression and what should be d2 expression and what is d1 expression and what is d0 expression to get the values of q3 q2 q1 q0 like this so first let me write for d3 here is d3 values what are d3 values here we need to put uh, this will be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and this is 1 here it is 1 again this is 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 1 so this will be the values of d3 now we need to group these we will be having four values here i will group this as one group and then we can group these two with these two as one group so this will be a single uh, bit this will be a single bit group and we can group these four as one to cover this one right now so for this four group what is the expression we are going to get going to get q3 and in uh, horizontally we are going to get q3 q1 bar plus let me take this group now what we are going to get here q3 q0 bar similarly if you look at this we are going to get q3 q3 q2 bar plus for this we are going to get q3 bar q2 and here we will be having q1 q0 so this is our expression for d3 you can implement it as it is let me solve this to get the uh, simplified expression so that the logic circuit will be simpler here in first three expressions I am going to take q3 as common it becomes q1 bar plus q0 bar plus q2 bar plus I am going to write the last expression as it is q3 q2 q1 q0 q3 bar ok again here I will be applying a de Morgan's theorem q3 it is sum of three variables let me make it as product of those with a overall complement so this is complete bar plus 
we will be having q3 bar and let me write it in bracket for these three okay now it is looking like an xor gate xor gate will be having a bar b plus a b bar right this is the expression for xor gate similarly here we will be having q3 in place of a and this will be looking like b similarly here we will be having a bar this is b so we are going to get the expression finally as q3 xor with q1 q2 and q0 so this is the expression for d3 so let us write for d2 so this is the expression for d3 now let us go for d2 so d2 if we fill the table 1 1 1 0 now i can group these four together and i can group these two with these two and i can group this with this right so for this four group q2 and here i am going to get q1 bar q2 q1 bar plus so for this group these two and these two groups i am going to get here we have 0 0 1 0 so this is q0 bar with here we are going to get q2 q2 q0 bar plus now i am taking this group so for this group i am going to get here it is q1 q0 here we will be having q2 bar so this the expression for d2 now again we can simplify this let me take uh, q2 out of the first two expressions it becomes q1 bar plus q0 bar and i am going to write that expression as it is and now here if you look at this is q2 into q1 into q0 whole bar plus q2 into q1 q0 again it is looking like an xor gate we can write the expression as q2 xor with q1 and q0 so this is the expression for d2 similarly let me write the k map for d1 now we need to look for this column so we are going to get this so let me group these this will be one group and this is the another group so for this group what we are going to get q1 bar and q0 plus for this group we are going to get q1 and q0 bar so this is the expression for d1 again it is looking like a bar b plus ab bar so we can write it as this is q1 plus of q0 this is also an xor expression similarly if we write the k map for d0 again we have these two groups this is one group this is the another group so this group gives you q1 bar q0 bar and this group will give you q1 q0 bar this is for d0 so if you take q0 bar as common it will be q1 bar plus q1 so these two expressions gives one so q0 bar is the result of d0 so now we have uh, the expression for d3 d2 d1 and d0 so let me write those expressions here what is d3 we have d3 is equal to q3 xor with q2 and with q1 and with q0 this is d3 similarly we have d2 is equal to q2 xor with xor with q1 with q0 and we have d1 is equal to q1 xor with q0 similarly what is d0 it is q0 bar so these are the four expressions we will be having so we require four d flip flops this gives q3 this gives q2 this gives q1 this gives q0 by using these four we can have a logic circuit for d3 d2 d1 d0 with these expressions so first let me take the clock signal this is the main clock i am going to provide this is the common clock for all the flip flops and then i am going to take q3 q2 q1 q0 and i am going to just extend those lines so here i will be having 
q3 here i have q2 this is my q1 so this is q0 line so what we need to do now we need to take d3 expression it is q3 xr with q2 q1 q0 so here we will be having this is q0 this is q1 this is q2 so now we need to take one and gate for this this and gate gives q2 q1 q0 this need to be xr with q3 so let me take this put one xr gate this xr gate is the input for d3 this generate q3 similarly look at d2 now d2 is q2 xr with q1 and with q0 so this is q1 this is q1 line and uh, this is q0 line so we need to take these two we need to put one and gate and this will be xr with q2 so this is q2 put one xr gate this is my d2 similarly what is d1 d1 is q1 xr with q0 so this is q1 xr with q0 these two need to be xr xr these two this gives d1 and then d0 it is not of q0 itself so this is d0 so this gives q3 this gives q2 this gives q0 this gives sorry this is q1 this is q0 are the four outputs of a counter this is how we can design a synchronous counter how why we say it is synchronous means clock will be shared by all the flip flops with the master clock this design provides a 4 bit output as 0000 it will count up to 1111 again it will be 0000 it will count up to 1111 this is how we can design any counter by using the flip flops by utilizing its excitation table thank you